Hello there. In the past month I've been working on block models, block rotation and I finally added support for stairs. But first I would like to talk about mesh memory optimization. I want to talk about this because there are some simple optimizations that many people don't know about or don't even consider. Let's start with what I had in the Java version and go from there. The Java version is a good reference point because I already had block models set up. Whereas in the ZIG version so far I've only used voxel models which have completely different requirements. Now obviously for the vertex data we need a vertex position, a face normal, UV coordinates to map into the texture, a texture index to determine what texture we are on, and one light value per color channel. All of this sums up to some 40 bytes per vertex. Additionally, we need an index buffer, which adds an additional 4 bytes per index or 24 bytes per face. In total, we have 184 bytes per face. To put this into perspective, at a render distance of 12 chunks, Cubus currently stores up to 100 million faces if you are in a dense cave system. Now that would be 18.4 gigabytes with this vertex data. That's completely insane. But at first there actually seems to be little we can do about it. We can't get rid of the index buffer and we can't compress the vertex data because inevitably we would lose precision in the position, the normal or the UV coordinates. And I don't really want to do that. What's so frustrating about this is that there are some obvious redundancies here. Like the face normal and texture index are the same for each vertex of a face. It would be great if there was a per face buffer, but the hardware only allows using vertex and index buffers. Well, that's what many people think at least. In reality, we have general purpose GPUs, which can read from arbitrary buffers or textures, even from the vertex shader. Now, before we get into applying this knowledge, I would like to show you a few other engines which are having the same problem. First up, there is Hobson, who made a few pretty popular devlogs a couple years ago. And he made one video in particular specifically about mesh optimizations. As you can see, he only uses 4 bytes per vertex. And because of that, his models are really limited. Like for example, the vertex position is fixed to an integer value. Additionally, the UV coordinate can just be 0 or 1 and the texture index only has 512 different values. And the lighting is also really simple. What's important to note here is that he didn't use an index buffer. That's why he has a total of 24 bytes per face. This number is quite interesting actually because later we'll see that with the same number of bytes per face we can actually have arbitrary model support with floating point values for all of the vertices. Next up we have Final for Each who is working on a game called Cosmic Reach which already has attracted quite a few players. Similarly to the Java version of Cubus, he's storing the vertex position at floating point resolution. Additionally, he has the same lighting stuff. The only difference here is that he has only four color channels and his colors can only go up to 15 blocks. And what's interesting here is that he has this texture index and this texture index actually points into this UV buffer. Apparently this UV buffer holds the UV coordinates for each of the different textures he has inside of his texture atlas. So it seems he already knows that it's possible to use custom buffers. 
but he isn't using them to the full extent possible. Also another interesting thing is that he seems to have no normal data in here. And what I'm guessing is that he stores the normal implicitly. Also he told me that he isn't actually using the UV buffer anymore. This is because it was making some trouble on macOS apparently. I think he should try to investigate that more to figure out what's the actual problem. And finally, for a more complete game, we have Vintage Story. As you can see, there's already a lot going on. It has the usual vertex position and UV coordinates. The normal seems to be compressed to just 12 bits, which is a reasonable thing to do. The lighting looks suspiciously big, like I don't think you need 32-bit for what is present in Vintage Story. But then again, I'm not 100% sure, so we'll just assume that all those 32 bits are needed here. And then there's some other stuff. The season and climate data seems to be constant per model, so keep that in mind. So let's get back to Cubus and start optimizing. The first and very simple thing we can do is we can reuse one index buffer for all of our chunks. This basically moves the cost to zero and from a memory footprint it's basically not there. Next up we can make our face buffer, which we wanted to make all along. Now we said the face normal is constant and the texture index is constant. This already helps quite a lot, but we can do more here. These UV coordinates for example come directly from the block model. In Cubus there are only around 200 block models. Now why would we store this value for all of the hundreds of millions of vertices when we could get away with only storing it like 200 times? This is where the model buffer comes in. By making a per model buffer we can move all the for model stuff like the UV coordinates and the face normal in there. The model buffer consists of quads, so there are four vertices per model basically. And in the face buffer now we also need a way to access the model we are using, so we need an extra model index. Or I think I called it quad index in the code. Now the last big thing that we have left here is this vertex position. Now we can split this up into the chunk position, which can be stored in a uniform. Then the block position, which is constant for the entire phase obviously. And then we also have the model vertex position, which tells us where the vertex is relative to the block. And this one we can move up into the model buffer. Now since the vertex buffer is basically empty and it's more efficient to have one continuous buffer instead of two different buffers, we can also put the lighting buffer into the face buffer and we need to repeat its values four times. Now with alignment, this brings us down to 24 bytes per face. And the funny thing here is that this is the same number of bytes that Hobson had with his completely limited model. So let's get going and optimize his game. The first optimization would be to use an index buffer. This is really important because most voxel engines like this are vertex bound. And without an index buffer, we have six vertex shader invocations per face. With the index buffer, we only have four. So that's an easy 50% performance increase. And additionally, since the index buffer can be reused, this also reduces the vertex data. All right, next up, we can make the same thing that we did before. Introduce a face buffer, put all the constant data in there like the texture index and the light. 
And we can also separate the vertex position into a block position and the model vertex position, which is only one bit. And then we can also move that over into the face buffer. And lastly, even though these values are incredibly small, they will still take four bytes per vertex due to alignment. So it really makes sense to use a model buffer here as well. And move that over. The vertex buffer is completely useless once again. And we also need a model index, but Hobson only seems to have 10 different quads in his engine, so four bits are totally enough for that. Additionally, we can also move the light value over here. And then we basically need four bytes per face. Now here we are only using 28 of the 32 bits and that leaves room for some improvements. For example, we can increase the model or texture index and that would allow us to have more models. Additionally, we can easily increase the resolution inside the model buffer and this practically has no cost. Next up, final for each. This is a bit more difficult because if we try to make the face buffer, we'll notice all these values are different for all of the vertices. So we cannot move anything into the face buffer. But we can move on and make the model buffer anyways. Again, we need a model index. And now we can do the same thing we did before, split that into the block position and the model vertex position. Move that into the model buffer, that into the face buffer. And now the texture index, we could improve that by storing all four corners of the region in the texture, then we would use the vertex index to index into that. And this would allow us to move the texture index also into the face buffer. That's eight bytes per face. Here we have the problem that we are only actually using 16 bits, but due to alignment, we need to allocate four bytes. So in this case, it makes sense to move the light value into the face buffer. And that way we basically save eight bytes. So in total, we are down to just 16 bytes per face. Now, vintage story is a bit more difficult. But let's start with the face buffer. The normal is constant and the season and climate data is constant. Next up, we can make the model buffer, which holds the UV coordinates, the normal, and the season and climate info. Now there is a bit of a problem because Vintage Story has a ton of models and a ton of quads. I have looked into the assets and there is a total of over 2000 different models, which in total have the insane number of 240,000 different quads. <laughs> that is unbelievable. How do you get so many assets? But anyways, this is a restriction here, so we cannot use a 16-bit integer. We need to go all the way and use a 32-bit integer to store the model index or quad index. The vertex position is actually more complicated than what we have done so far. The problem is that Vintage Story offsets some of its models like grass and leaves and rotates them randomly. And sadly, randomness is relatively hard to compress. 
The only way it could be compressed is by recomputing the random rotation and offset in the vertex shader. Now, like I said earlier, voxel engines like this are usually vertex bound, so putting more work into the vertex shader might not be such a good idea. However, I think it might be worth a try since it would save a ton of memory. And this is what I'm going to assume here. So with this assumption, we can again divide this into the block position and the model vertex position, which can be moved into the model buffer. And the block position belongs into the face buffer. Again, here we have the case where there are 12 bits unused at the end of the buffer. So it really makes sense to put these into the face buffer as well and store them four times. Again, the vertex buffer is completely useless and this totals up to 32 bytes per face. Now to summarize, for vintage story we went down a factor of 4. For final for each game we went down a factor of 5. For Hobson we went down a factor of 6. And for Cubus we went down a factor of 7 or 8. If we go back to the example from the beginning, at render distance 12 in a cave system with 100 million faces, this would now only take 2.4 gigabytes of video memory. Now this is still suboptimal and actually the only things that prevent me from increasing the render distance further are actually the chunk memory and the mesh memory. So I will need to find another way to reduce these further. There are a few more complicated things that can be done here, like greeny meshing or using palette compression for the light data. And I will have to look into these in the future. For now though, I'm satisfied with my 24 bytes per phase, because that's exactly the same amount of memory that I had before I introduced block models. Now I just had to re-implement block rotations Previously, I did them in the vertex shader, but I decided to just pre-compute the rotated models instead. This makes it a lot easier to deal with. Additionally, I decided to finally implement stairs into the game. I've been wanting to do that for four years now, and I even mentioned it in my first devlog. My idea was to make it so that all eight subblocks can be individually edited using a chisel. This allows the player to make more detailed buildings and Carrie from our Discord server really surprised me by building a nice table and some other stuff within just one hour after I added this new mechanic. Also special thanks to her for reworking a ton of the textures which made them look a lot nicer in my opinion. That's it for today. I hope you learned something and I'm happy that I finally got around to some more gameplay features this time. But there is still a lot of engine work ahead. Most importantly, the server side with world saving and loading and of course further optimizations. Additionally, I recently tried out Vulkan again and it actually wasn't as bad as I remember. So who knows, maybe I'll transition to Vulkan soon? Goodbye.